So in our last tutorial, we've set up the quest windows and in the tutorial before that, we actually created our first quest. Now, right now, there's no possible way the player can actually complete the quest. So let's first make sure that the player can actually complete this entire quest so we can go through the entire process. So first we have gather some items. Let's just make this uh, kill three monsters and let's see. And well, we can use a time limit. Let's just stick with one task for now. Okay. So to create some monsters, we actually have a component that we can use as a demo script. So I'm just going to create a new plane. So we actually have something to stand on. And let's create a capsule. Okay. So on here, we can actually add a um, monster script. Mm. Yep. All right. Um, and the monster script, all it does is really just walk around, and when we click it, twice uh, it will it will die and then we can use that to progress our quests so for example if we type in trigger or quest trigger so we have a quest progress trigger and we have a set quest progress on destroy so when our uh, target is destroyed this object is destroyed we can say i want to take this quest with the task main and I want to give that task uh, one extra progress. So when we destroy this target, we get one extra kill on our quest. So I'm just going to duplicate a couple of times and then start our quest. The My Custom Monster actually uses the Unity Nav Mesh, which hasn't been baked yet, so we first have to do that. And then we go to Navigation. And it'll show up here on the right, and then we can actually bake our nav mesh. So just hit bake, and you see this blue thing showing up on the ground, which is our navigation mesh. So if we now start, so we have the quest, and we click accept. Now if I open the quest window, you can see here we have the gather quest. We killed zero of three because we just started the quest. So if I click some of these spheres. Yep, come here. Alright, so you can see the progress, and there we go, we killed three out of three. You can also see in the message here, over in the log, that we completed the task, um, and our quest is now completable. So we can just click here again, and as you can see, we have a complete button, and done. Alright, so we can actually complete our entire quest. So let's add a reward giver, so we can actually give our player a specific reward uh, when they actually complete this task. So to do so, we actually have to dive a little bit into code, but it's actually really simple. So I'm just going to create a new script in my quest system profiles, C sharp script, um, and we'll call this my reward giver. Now, all we have to do is implement the I reward giver interface, and as you can see, it's in the namespace devdoc.questsystempro. Now, we can also use the named reward giver, which is um, basically a simplified version that has some built-in features. So we can actually use the um, standard UI element, so we don't actually have to create our own manual UI elements to display the reward. So in this case, I'll actually go with the named reward giver, but you can also use the regular reward giver uh, if you prefer. So we're going to implement the missing members. Um, we don't actually have to implement mono behavior, so I'm actually going to remove that one. So we have the name, now we can actually do something like a private string name and then serialize this field, 
and then we simply return the name here. So this will be a field we can specify inside of our um, inside of our editor, and then the name will be returned through the interface. Then we have a reward UI prefab. This is the UI prefab used to display the reward to the player. Um, we can make our own one, but for now it's probably easiest to use the quest manager dot instance dot quest uh, settings database, and then we have some default reward row UI. So this is the default reward row, uh, which will show just the name and the um, reward to string. So we have, can we actually give the reward? So maybe you want to check if the inventory is full first or not. So in this case, I'm just going to return true. We can always give the rewards. Oh, got to return the condition info. So we should do condition info dot success. Um, if the reward cannot be given, we can actually return a condition info object, which um, can contain a message. So you can display that message to your player. So now to give the actual reward, well, we don't have actually, actually have a system like an inventory in place right now. So let's just do a simple debug.log message. Um, give rewards for quest name. Okay. So now we just wait for Unity to recompile. And once that's done, we can go to Tools, Quest System Pro, Main Editor, select our quest, and then we can go to the Reward Givers, expand that, add a type, and then we see here our My Reward Giver. That's the one we just created. We just add it. We can add the name for this uh, reward, so... And that's it. So if we now start the game, now if we click our quest, we can actually see that our rewards are not showing up. And this is actually because in our settings database that we generated in the first tutorial, none of the uh, UI prefabs are actually set. Which we can actually do now. Uh, we can actually go to our designs, RPG style, and then quest UI prefabs. And in here we have the reward rows, which is the default row, which will show the key or the name of the task. Uh, the name of the reward, sorry and the uh, output. So if we go to our quest uh, two, 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 settings database like this, I'm just going to lock it so it doesn't change. And then to the quest UI prefabs, reward givers, and I'll just drag in the default reward row. And we also have the default task, so we can actually grab that one. Um, and this is for the nodes, which is for the dialogues, uh, but we'll do that later. Okay, so now we've actually signed the UI prefabs, we can actually start the game and everything should work. So if I click the quest giver, we can actually see our reward, which is the name we specified here. Yep. There. And then we have my reward giver. And we might want to give a specific message here, which we can actually do. If we go to the my reward giver, we can override the to string, which is the, um, the default C sharp system object override, and then here we can return the the value we want to display as the actual reward. So we might want to um, uh, let's just return a simple string. So. If we save this. you'll see that our message shows up here. If you want to show something like an icon, a texture, or maybe um, anything else really, you'll want to return a different UI prefab, um, but we'll go over this in a another tutorial. So that's for this one, and in the next one, we'll go over how to set up quest progress through triggers for areas.